Life Audio. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? Or have you been in a season where it feels like He's completely silent? Have you been praying for a way to learn how to hear His voice more clearly? Hey friends, I'm Rachel, host of the Hearing Jesus Podcast. If you are ready to grow in your faith and to confidently step into your identity in Christ, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. Today, we're continuing our devotional study, and we are in Matthew chapter 7. We went a little long yesterday, so to make up for that, we're going to get right into today's passage. It says, Do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, and look, the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, or they will trample them under your feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Now, there's much more that we're going to continue to get into in the rest of chapter 7, but I wanted to spend a little time on just these first six verses, because I think there's a lot packed in here that is relevant for our own lives. You know, it's interesting when Jesus talks about the speck or the log, as we remember that Jesus was a carpenter and he was a carpenter's son. And so what he's doing here is he's using an example of hyperbole. Now, we've talked about hyperbole over the last couple week or two about how it was one of those literary devices that Jesus would use as a teaching method. So a hyperbole, if you don't remember English class, is an intentional exaggeration that is done as a way to illustrate or make a point. And so when he's talking about a speck, of course, he's talking about a small piece of wood, maybe a twig or even something as small as a splinter, and then a plank, which is, of course, a large beam of wood. Now, this doesn't mean that we aren't going to be judged. But what it's doing is it's looking at this idea of judging others, especially when we may have the same issue, perhaps even a larger issue. But ultimately, we have to recognize that God is our judge. Now, it says you too will be judged, but we're not to take on God's role in judging someone's heart. He's basically pointing out how foolish that is to do that because it's God alone that can judge the heart. You know, I think about times in my own life where I have been really irritated (laughs) about someone's issue that is glaringly obvious to me, so much so that I have been tempted to point it out to lovingly suggest to them that they might want to deal with that issue. But, you know, one of the things that always strikes me is how often if I stop and pause and think about what issue they're having, there's usually a root of something similar in my own life. And I'm very quick to see that flaw in them, but not examine the flaw in my own heart or my own life. So what I have done now is when something rubs me that way, when something is bothering me, I use that as a trigger to remind me to examine my own heart or my own life and see if there's perhaps something similar that's going on in my own life that perhaps I'm looking around. And then it goes on to talk about dogs and pigs. Now, you have to remember The scriptures were written for us, but not originally to us. They were written to an ancient people group in a different culture and a different time frame. And so when it's talking about dogs or even pigs, it's not talking about our furry friends and our pets that live inside of our homes today. And, you know, a couple of years ago, I would not have included pigs in that category, but more and more people are having pigs inside the home as pets. And that is not what he's talking about. See, in that culture... Dogs and pigs represented something that they understood to be basically an insult. In the ancient world, dogs lived in squalor. They were scavengers. They ran the streets. They would sometimes even feed on the flesh of corpses. And so it was a derogatory term that was used for an enemy of Israel's covenant community. And so it was this indication 
that the person was the lowest on the social scale of their culture. The Jews thought really lowly of them because they were some of the only animals that were doing that at the time within the city walls. And yes, they could be trained to guard flocks or even people, but they were never brought into the home like they were today. When he's talking about what is sacred, he's referring to the message of the gospel. So there's this idea here that he's talking about those that are unreceptive or that have rejected the message of the gospel or a relationship with Jesus. And again, the pig imagery reinforces that idea. Pigs were usually wild scavengers. And so sometimes they would eat decaying corpses. And sometimes they would run through the fields and destroy fields. And sometimes they would even kill small children. And we also have to remember that the rejection of pork was a symbol of the separation of the Jews from the unclean Gentiles. Now, if you haven't been following along with our psalm studies, so we did study that in detail. But just to remind you, in the Old Testament, the Philistines were a seafaring culture that was right next to Israel. And the Philistines in their culture worshipped pigs. So not only were they eating pigs, they were literally worshipping pigs. So when God gave that mandate for the Israelites to not eat pigs as part of that list of unclean foods, part of the reason for that is he was trying to separate the Israelites' behavior from that of the Philistines. The Philistines were dark and so different from God's covenant people in many ways, but one of the main ways was with their worship of the pigs. And so, yes, of course, there might have been dietary restrictions for other reasons because of maybe the uncleanness of that animal, but the heart issue was what God was getting at. He was wanting to protect them and keep them divided from this false God worship of worship of pigs. It's part of the reasons that up until this time in Jesus' time frame, they were not eating pigs. And so it was this representation of a separation of God's covenant people from the other people that were worshiping false gods at the time. So pigs would symbolize, again, something unclean to that culture. Pearls, on the other hand, symbolize the value of this message of the kingdom of heaven, the gospel message. And so even this idea of something as valuable as pearls should not be given to something as unclean as a pig. And it's this understanding that the value of the gospel message should not be given to those who don't appreciate the truth of that message. And so they demonstrate that rejection message of the gospel by the way they treat the message of the gospel. You know, in my line of work, teaching and preaching and sharing God's message for God's people, one of the necessary tools that we use is the internet. Uh, That's how you're listening to me right now. But what happens is, is that exposure does not just go to believers. And almost on a daily basis, there are messages that come in from people that are hostile to the gospel. And, you know, my heart is always to help people hear God's voice more clearly in their lives. And if people have genuine questions, not only do I take that seriously, but I typically develop resources for them, especially when several people have those same kinds of questions. My heart is always to point people towards Christ. And that's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is people that legitimately hate the gospel. They hate Christians. They hate Jesus. They hate the gospel message. And so they will antagonize or they will leave messages that are hate filled. And, you know, early on in my career, I would respond to every single one of those because I felt like it was my responsibility to get these people saved or to expose them to the gospel or to be kind enough to them that they would want to see Jesus in me and pursue God's plan for their lives. But what I quickly learned was These were often plants from the enemy that he was using to distract me from God's primary use of my time. See, my time is better spent teaching people like you how to hear God's voice more clearly instead of defending to people like them that have no interest in hearing God's voice more clearly. That's the heart of this message here. It's not saying that we shouldn't be forthcoming or want to tell people about the gospel. What he is saying is, Guard those pearls, guard those pearls, those sacred truths of the gospel, give them to people that want them. 
Don't throw them to people that are going to just trample on them. So given that insight, I'm going to go back and I'm going to reread starting at verse one of Matthew chapter seven. And again, I'm using the New American Standard Version. If you have a different version that you prefer, then please, by all means, go ahead and use that. It says, do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in this way that you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye and look, the log is in your own eye. You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs and do not throw your pearls before pigs or they will trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. God, we thank you for your word and the treasure that it is like those gems and those pearls. God, help us to recognize the ways that we perhaps are throwing our pearls to pigs, God, or to know the difference between legitimate people that want to hear your voice more clearly or those people in our lives that the enemy is sent to antagonize, to waste our time, to discourage us or to make us feel defeated. God, help us to recognize that it's okay to separate those moments and to perhaps ignore the ones that the enemy might use in our lives and to lean into the ones that you have placed in our lives. God, help us to know the difference. And Lord, help us to also recognize those pricks in our heart. When we feel tempted to judge other people for the things that they're doing, God, help us to turn that judgment inward and to look at our own hearts and look at our own minds and see if there's any way that we are doing those same things, God, because we recognize that often the reason why those things rub us wrong is because we are not self-aware enough to recognize how they are functioning in our own life. God, I thank you for the way that your word reveals your character and your nature. And I pray for my friends today that as they continue to seek you, to lean into this stage of hearing your voice more clearly, God, that you would continue to reveal yourself to them. I ask for a blessing upon their lives today and their families' lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, friends, we'll talk tomorrow. Hey, friends, before you go, I want to make sure you know about our Patreon page. The Patreon page is really a place to gain all sorts of resources specifically for the Hearing Jesus podcast and the Hearing Jesus for Kids podcast. There's a specific and dedicated private Facebook group, which is a place for me to interact with you, to pray with you, to answer questions. I'd love it for you to join us there. And there's also another level that gives you the inside scoop on everything else that's going on. The journaling prompts are there. If you've been with us for some time, you know that I usually do journaling prompts that helps us get that information from the head to the heart. We have a downloadable daily prayer prompt that helps you get that information processed in a way that it affects your daily life. There's also a Bible reading tracker on there. There's bonus episodes, lots of things on an ongoing basis, a place where you can get all the resources to help you grow in your faith. And the second thing I want to mention to you is the Dawn app, which if you've never heard of that before, I have good news for you. I just recently recorded a series for the Dawn app and also did some writing for them. And it's a daily Bible study and prayer app that is completely free. The link for that is in the show notes. And then the last thing I'm super excited about, I want to tell you that we're going to start having opportunities for travel. This is going to look a couple different ways, depending on what you're looking for, but it's going to cover things like mission trips in-person retreats, and also eventually a Bible study trip to Rome. What I'm doing right now is I'm getting everybody's contact information so we can start communicating about what that might look like. So if you are interested in any of that, you can head to shehears.org for more information. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you will find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you in your walk with God, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, bonus content, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you. Know that you are so loved. Keep going. Keep going.